This is Focus on Your Health on the KJAZZ Radio Network. It's brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center in historic Kingman, Arizona. I'm T.G. Lafredo, and this week my guest is Dr. Christopher Johansson. He's the Director of Breast Imaging at KRMC. Hey, Dr. Johansson, welcome. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. We're here in the catacombs of the Imaging Center. We found the quietest space. (laughs) Um, We have a lot to talk about. Breast health. We've been doing a lot of shows on breast health lately, trying to encourage women to get out and you know take care of themselves, get the, get caught up on their mammograms. Um, and you're at the heart of all of this. You uh, are absolutely, absolutely. We really appreciate everything that that you and everyone else is doing to help inform women of all their opportunities for breast health and the different ways we can help and aid them to maintain good breast health. Uh, there's so much going on and so many new technologies coming out. It's been a very exciting time in breast imaging over the last few years, and we've been very lucky to be here at KRMC and have great support from our hospital to stay absolutely current and have a lot of new technologies that we can use and, and make sure that we're right up there at the forefront with everyone else in the country. Yeah, I definitely want to get into some of that. Your title here is that you're the breast imaging director. Correct. So it, breast imaging is, is part of radiology that's a little bit different than the rest of radiology. Uh, a lot of radiology is... is uh, not cut and dried, but it's uh, more book oriented. Mm-hmm. Mammography is much more pattern recognition. It's uh, it's a little more difficult uh, to to recognize breast cancer because the breast is uh, an organ that can have so many different appearances, and breast cancer can have a lot of different appearances. So because of that, we actually limit the number of people we have that are reading mammography to make sure that everyone is uh, really getting a good volume. All the people that interpret mammography here get lots of experience uh, ongoing to make sure that they're uh, doing enough studies to really feel comfortable. My role as breast imaging director involves some extra training in addition to my general radiology training to learn about a lot of these techniques that we've been able to bring to Kingman. And then I'm responsible for the day-to-day functioning of our breast imaging center, making sure that all of our protocols are up to date and that everything we're doing is in line with the best standard practices across the country. So is it with your specific job, is it a lot of um, kind of... Uh medical director stuff? Are you also working with patients very often? We mostly work with patients. Yeah. There is some medical director administrative activities, which right. which we tolerate because we know <laughs> that they're so important uh-huh. for good care. But the best part of my day, and luckily the majority of my day, is right. spent uh, looking for breast cancer, talking uh-huh. to patients, reading their mammograms, MRIs, ultrasounds, uh, talking to other clinicians in the community to coordinate our care all as a team to make sure we're doing everything we can for our patients. How long have you been here, by the way? Technically, I started working here in 2010. Now, at that same time, I was out in Boston doing some of my further training. So it was a very busy, exciting year uh, going between the coasts. I never realized quite how large America was until (laughs) I had to fly from Boston to uh, Las Vegas on a Friday night. That was your commute. (laughs) Yes, exactly, exactly. And then make it back with the time change. Uh, I moved here full time in 2011 and have been here ever since. Uh, this sometimes happens in radio where I am not recording and just chatting with someone and some amazing stuff comes up and later I'm saying, what just happened? How did that, how did that happen? And then of course, other times people will get red light fever. You'll start recording and then, uh, uh, you know, no one can think of anything to say. Well, not long ago, you and I were just chatting and you started telling me some amazing stories about, you know, getting here to this point, your commute across the country, mm-hmm. you weren't really allowed to, to be moonlighting? <laughs> well, it, it, was, it was unclear. It was a gray area. Okay. Uh, but there was no way I wasn't going to be coming out to Kingman because it was such an exciting opportunity. Okay, uh, so at this point, I'm interrupting you, I'm sorry. No problem. At this point, you were studying or you were in a fellowship? What was the story? Right, so I'd already graduated my residency and was an officially licensed radiologist, able to go out and practice radiology. But Breast imaging is is a fascinating area, and it's an area that you really need to study at the feet of the masters to mm-hmm. to start getting good at mm-hmm. and go from just being proficient to really being someone who can uh, really figure out a lot of mammograms. And so while well, my partners were coming straight down here to Kingman, I went out to Boston and Massachusetts General Hospital and was able to do nothing but breast imaging uh, every day of the week, 12 hours a day for an entire year, uh, wow. and except for the times when I was out in Kingman when I was doing more breast imaging here, right. uh, and really get a feel for how people approached breast imaging in, in different parts of the country. It's amazing. Uh, medicine varies quite a bit 
from uh, the Midwest to the Southeast to the Northeast, etc. And so everything I had learned at Mayo was valuable. It was even more valuable to get someone else's point of view and see how they did things uh, in the Northeast. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how medicine varies from place to place. Well, it can be anything from the names that they apply to the same entities to their methods of figuring out what something is. In some cases, they even have different ideas of how to treat things, and what should and shouldn't be treated. Wow. Luckily, in breast imaging, it's a little more standardized than that. So we have good standards as to when to treat, what to treat, and how to treat. But the names are a little bit different. Mostly, it's the techniques that they've developed there when they're looking at mammograms to recognize what's abnormal and what isn't and should be left alone. Uh, adding that to what we had learned at Mayo was really helpful for me. Without belaboring the point, you weren't exactly supposed to be here and in Boston at the same time? <laughs> well, it was it was a very busy year. Mm-hmm. Uh, some places are, recognize the value of right. working out in the real world while you're also studying in the ivory tower. Right. Other places, a little bit less so. We didn't pursue that uh, that discussion out in Boston. <laughs> I just decided that it was really important for me to be here, and, uh-huh. and I recognized how important it was to be out in the real world and getting that experience and planning our future practice. And you it learned was, the art of bilocation. Absolutely, absolutely. It was also really helpful, too, because a lot of the techniques we use here, we imported from Mayo and Mass General, right. and it allowed me to come here, set them up, and if things didn't go quite the way I wanted, Two days later, I was back in Boston and could ask the people who literally invented it, right. how can I do this better? And that was invaluable for building the foundation of our breast imaging techniques and procedures. It may be safe to say you've kind of led this team, this crew from Mayo to, there's a super highway from Mayo <laughs> in Rochester, Minnesota to KRMC in Kingman, Arizona. That, that's our goal. Yeah. You know, and, and all of my partners have been absolutely instrumental in having us come down here and succeed here. I was the first one to be aware of Kingman uh-huh. uh, up at Mayo, but uh, the the two doctors that I originally came down with, Dr. Cale Bodley and Dr. Wade Alleman, uh, were both instrumental. I, I never would have uh, been able to come down, much less succeed, without their work and, and work ethic and, and just wonderful personalities and all their knowledge. How did it happen that you ended up the leader of these defectors? Then? <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily the leader. <laughs> it was very much a, a group effort. Yeah. Uh, but I was the chief resident up uh-huh. at Mayo, and KRMC needed radiologists. Yeah. They had been working with Mayo Scott Scottsdale, asked Mayo Scottsdale if there are any residents that might be interested. Mayo Scottsdale has fellows, but no residents. So they bumped it up uh, to us in Minnesota. And since I was the chief, I received the letter yeah. and I immediately saw what a great opportunity. Uh, a little bit of research on KRMC showed all the great potential that it has. It's the only nonprofit hospital in the region coming from a nonprofit hospital like Mayo. That was important to us. I'm sure there are people who can both satisfy shareholders Mm -hmm. and do great medicine and put the needs of their patient first. Those doctors are out there, but it's difficult. And we really just wanted to focus on medicine and our patients. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to do that at a nonprofit hospital where your only concern really is doing good medicine. Yeah. Tell me more about this. I well, mm-hmm. no, let me interrupt you mm-hmm. before I ask you. I, I am loath to get political on. The, I I hate. <laughs> I really do. Mm-hmm. I just I'm apolitical. I don't play along. I don't buy into it. But again, when we were talking before, it seemed like there was this whole philosophy going on. I mean, it wasn't just like this is my job. And by the way, I love my job. It was there's it's it's almost dissident. That, <laughs> is that safe? To, is that fair? Well, you know, especially in breast imaging, you'll you'll okay. find a, at least a strain of that in a lot of medicine, but particularly in breast imaging because it, it overlaps heavily with public health. Mm-hmm. Uh, breast imaging is, is for a long time been one of the least profitable areas of medicine and also one of the most useful, one of the most effective uses of medical dollars because you save so many years of life for every dollar spent. Right. So when you get people who are in breast imaging, a lot of times we have that uh, little bit of a polemical bent to mm, us where okay. we uh, we have a mission. It wasn't our, just my imagination. No, 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 absolutely <laughs> not. It's, it's something that you commit yourself to because you understand all the good that will be done right. by pursuing good quality public health through mammography. Right. And in Mayo in general, you find a lot of that commitment to the patient, a commitment to science, uh, understanding that uh, you figure out what is correct and you apply that to the population at large for their benefit. Uh, that's, th- that's the goal of medicine. All the other things that in politics and, and in other parts of medicine sometimes muddy the waters a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mayo is kind of a square mile surrounded by reality in that they allow doctors <laughs> to, to really 
let a lot of that go aside and just focus on becoming good doctors and caring for patients. And since that's the fabric of the training that you and your team received up there, I feel like you've been able to to bring that here and stitch it into place. That was an integral part of the opportunity that we saw. Uh, It's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because Mayo is very upfront that that is their goal. And so the people that choose to go there oftentimes share some of that uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. And then while you're there, it's it's reinforced. You have it all around you every day. And so it becomes more and more a part of your personality. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit disquieting when we were all together thinking, What's going to happen when we go out into the real world, right. places where not everyone shares those ethical values, where yeah. you have to interact with, with other physicians that may or may not share those values? Wouldn't it be great if we could find a place where we could all depend on each other right. and where we could make sure that we were able to stay true to those values that were taught to us up at Mayo? And seeing a place that could accommodate several of us all at once and give us the freedom to shape our own practice was amazing. Uh, Anytime you go to a place that already has set values, already has a culture and has a hierarchy, it's difficult to affect change. Coming to KRMC in many ways gave us a bit of a blank slate in radiology because we took over the department all at once, uh, really with little influence from previous physicians in the department, allowing us to build uh, a little mayo. It's break time on Focus on Your Health. We'll be back in a moment for more with Dr. Christopher Johansson. This is the KJAZZ Radio Network. Welcome back to Focus on Your Health here on the KJAZZ Radio Network. This week I'm speaking with Dr. Christopher Johansson. He's the director of breast imaging at KRMC. It's been great to get the kind of support that we get from our hospital. The example that really sticks out in my mind is breast homosynthesis. Mm -hmm. That's a technology that was approved for use in the United States in 2011. Let's define it. Can we do that? Right. It's it's, uh, an improvement on the basic mammogram. Traditionally, a mammogram is a a 2D picture of a 3D structure. It's, It's like a painting you would see on a wall and... Even though you know that it's of a 3D structure, you have to kind of make that part up in your mind, and that's difficult, and that leads to a degree of uncertainty and error. That's one of the reasons that mammography didn't find 100% of cancers and sometimes called people back for further evaluation when there was no cancer. Mm -hmm. Tomosynthesis takes us a large step towards eliminating those two problems. It allows us to see the breast in multiple one-millimeter slices, It takes the study that used to be four two-dimensional pictures and turns it into two or three hundred pictures that we can look at and sum up in our mind to get a three-dimensional representation of the breast. When this technology started, there was no reimbursement for it. It was expensive to implement. It took a lot of physician time that was, again, absolutely unreimbursed. When uh, I wanted to bring it up to our hospital administrators, I had some trepidation because they're the ones responsible for the books, and it's hard to find a a group of uh, administrators to whom you can say, the only advantage to this is it's good for patients. It will lose you money. It will cost you hassle. Uh, I have no idea if it will ever be financially beneficial to you at all. But we should do it. Right. But I can guarantee you 100%. It is great for patients. It's like a kid going in front of his parents. I really should, you really should buy me this. I'm not sure what's <laughs> right. in it for you. But. Right, right. But I would really like this. And I expected I had all my arguments ready, all my uh, research and, and things to convince them. And, and all they said, all they asked was to confirm that it was good for patients. And that was the end of it. And, and yeah. it was purchased. And we became one of the very first places uh, to use it in the country. We were the second place in Arizona. We missed a, a fancier uh, place in Phoenix by only a couple of weeks to mm-hmm. be the first people in the state to use it. We've used it ever since. We bring it to all people. Uh, we screen everyone with this technology. It's really been uh, amazing to get to apply it to our population and, and see all the benefits. How have you seen the difference then in, in applying it versus, you know, if you didn't have this technology? The major benefit, and that's borne out by both our personal experience here and the literature at large, right. is that you call fewer people back. Mm-hmm. So when someone has a, a mammogram that's abnormal, it's more likely to actually end up being a cancer. Now, because breast cancer is so easily treated when it's caught early, 
we still call back a lot of people for further views and even biopsies that don't end up having breast cancer just because even a small chance of finding an early cancer is hugely advantageous uh, in terms of making it cheaper to treat, making the treatment more efficacious, and allowing us to use less drastic techniques. No chemotherapy, for instance, when we find breast cancers tiny. That being said, we still want to minimize that. That's stressful for patients. There's economic and time costs. We don't want to do that uh, if we can avoid it. This technology has allowed us to really reduce that. And there are cancers that you simply can't see on 2D mammography that we are able to see on 3D tomosynthesis. They are not very common, thank goodness, but they do occur, and we can catch those. Hmm. You know, one thing I talk often with physicians who have a lot of technology around them, uh, and I ask if you didn't have this technology, if you had to go back in time in medicine, where would you be? How would how would it affect? I mean, you know, so you have a mission. You would still continue to do that mission. You would be compromised by losing some of these very valuable tools. Absolutely. It's great to have tomosynthesis. We could go back to 2D mammography. That still uh, gets you a lot of benefit. Yeah. If tomosynthesis wasn't available, I would still be using 2D mammography because I know it's still hugely beneficial to women. Right. But uh, if I had to understand that 3D was out there and we couldn't use it, that would that would be suboptimal. It'd make me a little bit sad. Suboptimal. Uh, <laughs> uh, suboptimal to say the least. Yeah. Uh, both because I know my patients, I would be very sad if I ever missed a cancer simply due to not having the technology to see it. Right. Um, plus, there's just the personal, professional satisfaction of knowing that the things you're doing are the same things they're doing at the, the most famous right. places in the country and yep. at the biggest, most advanced, richest places in the country. They get the same things that we do. Yeah. It's nice to be on the cutting edge right there with them, especially in Kingman. Unfortunately, a lot of times, Kingman doesn't get all the same things that these bigger, sure. richer, fancier places get. So there's, yeah. a, there's a little bit of me that likes to smile and think, uh, in this case... It's the same here as it is in New York or San Francisco or Dallas or wherever. I like that. (laughs) Um, So with all of your training and and experience and then, of course, the crew you're working with here, and there's a lot of medical know-how. There's a lot of training. Um, I would think you could say there's a lot of wisdom here. What I'm wondering is do you ever have a moment where you're looking at results or you're looking at a test and you say, well, I don't. I'm not sure what that is. Absolutely. Yeah. Every day, actually. Really? Yeah. There's such a wide variety of pathology of things that are uh, abnormal, not necessarily bad, but just not what you typically see. Especially with all the different types of imaging we've developed in medicine. All I can say is thank goodness for my partners. They are amazing. Yeah. I ask them questions every day. Uh, If you have a a study that is interpreted, there's a good chance that it wasn't just the person whose name is on the bottom. It was actually two or three of us all putting our heads together saying, have you seen this? I don't know. Have you seen this? Uh, All of us doing the research to figure it out, even calling back to people we know that are uh, back at Mayo or wherever to, to see if we can get some guidance. It's a team effort, and that extends beyond the department, beyond just having my partners who are brilliant, brilliant guys. Uh, it's good to have all the other doctors at KRMC that we can call up and say, you know, we've got it down to two or three things. What's the clinical picture? Help us yeah. out so that we yeah. can tell you precisely the information that will help you treat this person. Let me ask you a personal, somewhat personal question. <laughs> were you one of these kids, like when you were little, you knew, oh, I want to be a doctor when I grow up? I, I did. I always wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. Uh, just don't even really know why. It's been part of my personality since I was a very little kid. What took you specifically into breast imaging? The best part about breast imaging for me uh, was how cost-effective it was. Yeah. You you oftentimes in medicine, you can spend healthcare dollars and wonder, is this really getting me good results? Is this worth my patients' valuable resources? Breast imaging is one of the most useful ways to spend healthcare dollars because it saves so much suffering, so much, so many years of life. For every dollar spent. Right. I really liked the public health bent to it. I also liked uh, serving in women's health. Mm-hmm. Women's health for many years has been a little bit ignored. That's right. less so today, but fighting that inequality uh, is, is satisfying is as well. <laughs> there it is again. That's, the, that's what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. When you say that you were kind of weighing costs and health, this sounds like the decision of a mature medical student. It doesn't sound like something that you think about when you're 14 and you say, I want to be a doctor when I grow up. So maybe at some point 
you had just begun studying medicine and you thought, okay, this is the specific path? Well, it's, it's funny. I didn't even think about breast imaging until I was in my radiology residency. Okay. Prior to that, in medical school, I had wanted to go into radiology. Uh-huh. A lot of that was based on uh, all the cool machines that they have and, uh-huh. and just having experienced how radiology influences almost every person who comes through the hospital. There was rarely a rotation in medical school that at some point you and the physicians teaching you didn't go to the radiologist to get the information you needed to treat whatever it was, whether it was a person in a car accident, a person with a, a mass or a lump you were trying to figure out, a person with headaches. Imaging was always there. It was mm-hmm. always helping to guide uh, treatment and, and guide diagnoses. Once I got into radiology residency, uh, breast imaging really typified that more than anything else. It gave me an opportunity to be a little bit of a primary care provider. In medicine, you have uh, a lot of doctors who primarily deal with patients and, and speak with them and, and are kind of on the front lines mm-hmm. taking care of problems that no one understands yet. The patient comes to them and they figure out what's going to be needed to solve this problem. And then you have uh, doctors that support them. Uh, oftentimes specialists. Radiologists typically support other doctors and try and, if possible, make their lives easier and their patients' lives better. Breast imaging allows me to straddle that fence a little bit because I still get to talk to a lot of patients. I still get to reassure people and and give them information and do everything I can to make sure they're not concerned or worried, uh, but also allows me to use all these fun machines and uh, advanced diagnostic techniques to help people. Out there on the cutting edge. Absolutely. Dr. Johansson, what is ahead for the Imaging Center? Lots of exciting things. Our most exciting uh, uh, change, new technology we're going to be implementing is breast MRI biopsy. Breast MRI is a very advanced technique that's very sensitive for looking for breast cancer. One of the ways it's so sensitive is that it sees everything that could possibly be wrong and a lot of things that aren't. So unfortunately, you have to sometimes get a little piece of tissue from the area that's in question to look at it and figure out exactly what it is. We're very lucky to have wonderful pathologists, doctors that look at these tissue uh, and, and tell us what they are. Are they something to worry about or not? That's absolutely integral to what we do. And we have Dr. Ryan Swap and Dr. Bedke, both from the Mayo Clinic as well. Yeah. Uh, it's so easy to work with them. Yeah, I've I talked can, to both of them recently. They're both they're, fantastic. They're, they're not yeah. just technically excellent, but they're they're on board with the team mentality. Yeah, and they're also cool cats, which is you know, a bonus. <laughs> I agree with that. I yeah. agree with that as well. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be implementing the ability to do biopsies under breast MRI. We've offered breast MRI for quite some time, but we haven't been able to offer biopsy capability. That's going to be one of the big changes we make over the next few months is the ability to biopsy things under breast MRI. That's really the last major technology or technique that we haven't implemented into the breast center. Of course, we're going to continue doing Uh, 3D tomosynthesis on as many patients as we possibly can to find those breast cancers that otherwise wouldn't be seen and to minimize the number of people we call back without finding something abnormal. Uh, We're looking to expand the breast center and really try and reach some of the people in Kingman and Mojave County we haven't reached in the past. Mojave County, for a variety of reasons, has a screening rate that is below the national average. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing we really want to change. It's very important to us to reach some of these people that want to be screened for breast cancer, but for whatever reason have not been able to. There's a great program uh, where we're opening on Saturdays, Mm -hmm. and not every Saturday, just uh, one Saturday a month, where women are able to come, not just have a mammogram done, but also meet with a, a nurse practitioner who's a specialist in women's health and breast health and can answer questions, give them good general information, uh, make sure that they really know what's going on and have all the information to make good choices about their own health. In addition, any sort of testing they need to get done, we can take care of it all just to make sure that things are streamlined. We're hoping that by being open on the weekend and by offering all of these services under one roof, we can help them to take care of their health and still get everything else done that they need to get done. And that breast health program Dr. Johansson was speaking of is called Time Out For Me. We've been talking about it on the program lately. For more information, you can call the KRMC Imaging Scheduling Line at 928-692-2727. That's 692-2727. Dr. Johansson, thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And that's the show. I'm T.G. Lafredo. Thanks for listening. And please join me again next Saturday at 11.30 a.m. for another edition of Focus on Your Health, right here on the KJAZZ Radio Network.